Attention please, God here. Are you an intelligent and rational person, who does not take anything for granted? Do you really want to understand God, universe, life, soul, afterlife, emotions, feelings, and a connection between everything? If yes, this is for you. You will be surprised, shocked and enlightened, all at the same time. You will learn, with evidence, most of it video, photographic or other scientific principles that, 1. God exists but is not how it is described. 2. You do have a soul. The soul dies when you die, but the body does not die. You have only heard the reverse, right? 3. If, there is heaven and hell, and what should you do? 4. For the first time ever, you will learn a universal definition of love, and other emotions. You can control, not only your own but others' emotions too. Imagine how powerful that can be. 5. The space is and always was infinite unlike scientists who believe it is not infinite because it is expanding. 6. How the universe began and what will happen. 7. How the Big Bang theory and dark energy theories are wrong. 8. You are literally master of the universe. You give birth to, and control, hundreds of trillions of lives. 9. How you can connect with God and feel the ultimate joy in healing. All this and more will be explained in this and a future series of videos. Subscribe if you are interested. Let me know your views and queries in the comments. Attention please, God here, by Vijay Shankar Sharma. Here is the list of questions and topics that are covered. 1. Introduction. 2. Your attention please. 3. Does God exist? 4. Who is God? 5. Is there one God or many? 6. What is life? Who am I as a human? 7. Did God create life and humans? 8. Are humans created for some test? 9. Did life evolve through random mutations or natural selection? 10. Do humans have a soul? 11. What happens to the soul after we die? 12. What is the purpose of life? 13. Is there an afterlife? 14. How big is the universe? 15. Is the Big Bang theory of the creation of universe correct? 16. Are there multiple universes? 17. Is time separate from space or part of it? 18. Will the universe end one day? 19. What is dark energy? 20. Does dark matter exist? 21. Do aliens exist? 22. What is consciousness? 23. Are positive forces good and negative forces bad? 24. Can humans ever see me? 25. Do humans have a soul? 26. What is death? 27. How can near death and past life experiences be explained? 28. What happens when people report seeing unreal things or ghosts, angels and even God? 29. Why do people report benefits from prayers and other practices? 30. What if heaven and hell do exist? 31. How can humans experience me? 32. If God does not judge, reward, or punish humans, am I encouraging bad behavior? 33. Why is there suffering in the world if God exists? 34. What are emotions? Are they part of consciousness too? 35. When do we feel positive emotions or love? 36. When do we feel negative emotions or hate? 37. My future dialogues. 1. Introduction. My name is Vijay Shankar Sharma. Although, I am highly educated, none of that education has been in philosophy, religion, or any branch of science. While I am from a Sanatan Hindu culture, I did not quite believe in God for lack of evidence that I could verify for myself and prove to others. I was a very poor student and never scored even 50% marks until 10th grade. I failed in biology, physics and chemistry in only two to three years of studying them in school. In 11th grade, I had failed three semesters of English in 11th grade, but did quite well in the fourth after a burst of inspiration. The only time I attended tuition in 12th class, a teacher to whom I am ever thankful to, gave me a two-line Saraswati mantra to recite a few times during the day when I started studying. Goddess Saraswati is the goddess of wisdom and music. I did as the teacher told me. The goddess literally and figuratively smiled on me, 
The result was that I topped English in 12th grade exam of Delhi Education Board and did quite well overall. Later, I was on the merit list in the final exams of one of the toughest professional exams in India to become a chartered accountant. I also have more professional post-graduation degrees in business management. Although the goddess clearly helped me and smiled at me, I knew what really happened and rationalized it. I did not quite believe in God, but in mid-2016, I decided to do some research to accept or dismiss God once and for all. I was reading books and watching videos and even went to attend a seven-day workshop by a guru but came back on the fourth day after learning that the guru wanted everyone to sign an NDA or non-disclosure agreement and commit not to tell what we were going to be taught. A good teacher will never want the knowledge he imparts to be kept a secret. I knew that I was not going to get true knowledge here. So, I left the workshop. While watching videos on God, YouTube suggested me videos about the universe and the Big Bang Theory. The theory, which has near consensus amongst 95% plus scientists, did not seem logical to me. I meditated on it for more than 1000 hours over several months. I pondered over what really happened during the creation of the universe. Finally, I felt one with the universal conscience and asked for the answer to be revealed. Then, not only did I get the answer I was looking for, but many more thereafter. I would reveal some of them here. Once you go through them, you would realize that almost all my answers about the universe, space, life, soul, and consciousness go against all existing knowledge and belief. Some questions were thought to be unanswerable even by someone widely regarded as a god. How one can love another has not been decoded in for over 10,000 years of human history, nearly everyone has advocated for the benefits of love. Some religious gods too preached giving love. Of course they called you sinners and characterized your suffering as the result of your own sins. No god or guru ever gave a foolproof, simple, or inexpensive way to experience love towards anyone or anything, including oneself. Some have prescribed a few of the unlimited ways of experiencing love that only work for a limited time for some people and are often quite suboptimal. Therefore, in view of following points, 1. The enormity of the questions being asked ever since humans first evolved, concerning God, universe, life, soul, afterlife, human emotions, etc., being answered here, 2. The multiple fields of study that the questions pertain to, 3. The fact that everyone ever only got wrong answers or none at all. 4. Even some religious gods who claimed to have become the realized one, or claimed to love you and wanted you to love your neighbors, either refused to answer such questions or conveniently forgot answering them. 5. The fact that I have had no formal training in any of the concerned fields of study, if my answers are proven right, I know the real God did speak to me. It is only in that context that I am purporting to communicate for God. You can ignore that part as humor or dramatization if you like. For everything that I say, I can and will provide concrete evidence. The evidence will be authentic scientific video, photo and other scientific principles and facts that can be instantly verified by everyone. No one who has ever talked about God, life, soul, universe, love, and emotions, has ever offered evidence of any kind. That is why there is ignorance or many conflicting views. If good evidence was offered, whoever examined it with open mind, would have understood the subjects. 2. Your attention please, I am God. I am finally revealing my true self. I will give answers to some of the questions that humanity has always been looking for and often fighting over. People have been looking for me forever. They try to view me through the lens of their own prejudices. Some claim to have witnessed my presence, interacted with me, or received my message. Others have claimed themselves to be me or have tried to act as my authorized agents. They have made several amusing and, at times, sinister attempts to describe me for their perceived benefits. Some people have claimed that although God exists, he has no form. However, they quickly begin praying to me and asking others to worship me too, as per the guidelines they provide. They design symbols to represent me to perform my ritualistic worship. They describe my personality and assign motives to me. They go further and begin to describe what happens to the body and soul and how I reward or punish people after death, as if they had personally witnessed it. Most people believe that God created man. Many of them also think that God created man as a superior being to all other beings. Such a portrayal of God results from human ignorance, greed, fear, or the desire to rule others. Some people have faith in God or some higher force, yet they are unsure of what God is, 
who God is, how to approach God, or if knowing God is of any benefit at all. And then there are the atheists. They do not believe that any kind of God exists and therefore, they do not think it is of any use thinking about such an entity. They do not believe that there is any God or power behind the creation of the universe or life. They also do not believe in a soul or morality more than the laws of the land require. Most people who initially reject God eventually begin to act like an almighty and angry God. Yet there are some who have called themselves the realized ones, and at the same time, they refuse to answer the following most basic questions from ordinary people. A truly realized one ought to know the answers to such questions. The questions below, including any variations of those questions, that the so-called realized ones could not answer, refuse to answer, and even forbade people from asking them, are given below, along with my answers. Is it true that the world is eternal? My answer, the universe is eternal. However, neither the planet Earth nor any individual matter in the universe is eternal. Is it true that the world is finite? My answer, the universe and space are infinite. They were and will always be infinite. Is it true that the soul and the body are the same thing? My answer, no. The soul is the collective conscience of every cell in a body. A body is the collection of multiple independent conscious cells that form a body to gain advantage in the pursuit of the common goal of individual atoms and cells. Is it true that after death, a realized one exists? My answer, no one exists after death in the current form. No human except the one communicating on behalf of me now, may have come closest to being the realized one. Even he will die and cease to exist. Did I exist in the past? My answer, no, you did not exist in the past. Will I exist in the future? My answer, no, you will not exist in the future. Am I? My answer, yes, you are real. What am I? My response, you are a life form who is made up of trillions of conscious cells that came together and organized themselves into and as your body. You have an equal number of conscience levels. In addition, you have one more level of conscience for each specialized function in your body and the final conscience for the whole body. That final level of conscience for the entire body is also your soul. How am I? My answer. You are the evolution of individual particles, atoms, and cells through their own and collective consciousness. Everything else, too, is the same. Let me answer some more common questions that humans ask but never get straight answers and never the correct ones. 3. Does God exist? Yes, I do exist, but I am not human, nor do I resemble anyone or anything you can ever see or imagine in its entirety, before or after death. I do not have the kind of relations that humans have with other humans. My only connection with everything in the universe is that I am the original cause of their existence and their conscience. Furthermore, although I am omnipresent, I am not omnipotent or almighty. I cannot do anything or cause anything specific to be done within any specific time frame. I do not desire anything from anyone. I do not love or hate you. I do not reward or punish you. I do not judge you in life or afterwards. I do not have any wishes, and I don't express any wishes by speaking, writing, or in any other way. I do not think or feel anything. Nothing is good or bad, and nothing is right or wrong for me. I have no love or concern for any life. I do not care for anyone's feelings. You can't come to me in life or after death. I do not give you rebirth at any time after death. I do not want you to worship me or do anything for me. I cannot be pleased or displeased. No life is superior or inferior to any other life for me. I do not even claim that I have made everyone equal or even created them. I do not speak or express myself. I do not feel anyone's joy or pain. For me, the pain of any life is similar to the pain of a stone you feel when the stone is kicked by someone. I am neither revengeful nor a protector. I do not care about any life because nothing ever dies for me. Furthermore, there is and always will be an abundance of life everywhere. Don't you think that if any of the above was false, I would instantly reveal myself as often as needed, to every human being and tell all of them who I am, what I want and how I will reward or punish them based on their beliefs and behavior. 4. Who is God? I am the field of conscience pervading the entire universe. This consciousness is constantly evolving and manifesting as new life. Yet, after evolution, all that remains is an evolved field of consciousness. That is still me. I, too, am evolving with everything else. I am the cause of all matter and forces in the universe. I am the cause of all life in the universe and of every thought and instinct in every life. For me, 
everything is always alive, except temporarily when it is undergoing an unpredictable change. 5. Is there one god or many? Humans have been fighting over the number of gods. Some say there is only one, and some say there are many. Some give levels to gods, and some consider men to be godly. This is a useless fight. I can be one or many depending on how you experience me, assuming you can. If you can't experience me, then whatever your claim about the number of gods is, it is meaningless. If you can experience me, the numbers do not matter. I can be from zero to infinity in numbers. If you cannot or do not want to experience me, I do not exist for you. If you can experience me, I am not zero for you, but any other positive number that you like. You can experience me as one whole or a s one or more of the infinite particles and forms in the universe, which are all parts of me. I am infinite at both the macro and micro levels. You cannot reach an end if you go far into the universe or deep into any matter. When you experience me, you can feel yourself surrounded by me from all sides. To achieve that, you can imagine yourself placed inside a single or many atoms as they get larger or you get smaller. There is another way. You can imagine that you surround me from all sides. You become me in that case. It is fine with me if you want to take this route. In both situations, the moment you achieve the desired state, you will instantly be filled with immense gratitude for me, and you will experience a feeling of love and joy that a new mother often experiences looking at her newborn, healthy, and smiling baby, while a loving father stands by her side. The difference in experiencing me is that you can have the same feelings as both the mother and the child as many times as you want. I will separately explain the secret behind all human emotions. You will be amazed to notice the connection between the process of experiencing me as I described here and the process that generates all human feelings. You will come to know how to consciously change your feelings and emotions and influence others' emotions. 6. What is life? Who am I as a human? Every particle, atom, or force is alive and conscious. Every one of them has the same objective, the propagation and protection of their own kind. To accomplish this, matter forms alliances with other matter in order to create forms that are more likely to have advantages in the pursuit of their life goal. Some evolve to the extent that they can start moving and performing other functions that humans have called life. For me, there is no difference between human life and any other that humans may call living or non-living. 7. Did God create life and humans? I am the cause of all life, matter, and forces, but I did not deliberately create life as humans know it. However, I caused all life to be created by giving consciousness to everything. Conscious matter is alive. To me, all matter is alive. It never dies, except temporarily, when it undergoes an unpredictable change. I did not create anything myself. Far from creating anything consciously, I did not and do not know what exactly will happen in the future. What humans call life is part of me. It evolved itself, combining more matter with time and taking advantage of the resources. After every evolution, all that remains is me. Every matter, force, and empty space is part of me. I evolve into ever more conscious matter, forces, and life. This evolution process is still on. It will continue forever. 8. Are humans created for some test? I did not create the universe or even the planet Earth for humans alone. Stop taking yourselves so seriously. Allow yourself to let go of your egotistical belief that you are the center of the universe or that you are superior to all other forms of life. On my clock, you did not exist a moment ago, nor would you exist a moment later. Many other life forms on Earth are already more evolved, in their own way, than humans. Millions of evolved life forms on other planets are a lot more evolved than humans. Many of those life forms also think of God or a similar power. Most get it wrong, like humans do. However, some life forms are fully realized. They have recognized God and life. Such life forms are mostly less evolved. As it evolves, the chances of it being confused about God and life also increase. Such confusion may be caused by oneself or others. Indeed, the positive and negative forces I have created will ensure that everything will change and evolve endlessly. 9. Did life evolve through random mutations or natural selection? No life was created as it is today. Life will also not stay as it is now. It is continuously evolving and changing. I do not create anything specific. All life forms are e also creating life. Humans are today able to create new life forms and manipulate existing ones. If only God created life, 
what would you call what humans can already do? So, the creation theory is incorrect, but those who reject the theory of creation offer the theory of evolution as a theory with good evidence. They attribute evolution to random mutations or natural selection. While evolution is correct, the method or cause of evolution cited is not correct. Everything in the universe is alive. It has the same conscience at the atom level and a different one when the atoms combine to form a more complex form. No evolution happened randomly. Life evolved consciously as the previous state of life truly desired or coveted the specific changes in its appearance, functions, and capabilities. Therefore, evolution was not through random mutation, but was a conscious and specifically desired change. No natural selection happened either. Nature does not select the winners or losers. The life that evolved faster and better within the rules of evolution crowded out or consumed the ones that were dominant earlier but failed to evolve themselves to fight the emerging forces, or they let other life take advantage of their weaknesses. A dominant life can also go extinct when the conscience of the currently dormant or subordinate life identifies a weakness in the dominant life or develops a new capability to overcome the dominant life. At times, a dominant life will go extinct due to developments not connected with such a dominant life. The rules of positive and negative forces, as I have described them, also ensure that if one life form becomes excessively dominant on a large scale, it will be defeated partly if such dominant life represents positive forces, while the dominant life form will be overcome in its entirety if the dominant life represents negative forces. I will explain it with more evidence separately. 10. Do humans have a soul? Every particle, atom, cell, force, and life form, or matter, in short, in the universal field of consciousness that is me has its own independent conscience and the collective conscience when it is combined with other matter. The collective conscience of a form that is made up of multiple independently conscious entities is the soul of the form. I will explain this in more detail and with video evidence separately. 11. What happens to the soul after we die? The body never dies. When a form loses control over its collective conscience, or soul, it dies. The body remains alive, and some or all independent parts of the matter may change their form or become part of another form, but the body never dies, only the soul dies. I will explain this in more detail and with video evidence separately. Yes, videos that have been created by humans. 12. What is the purpose of life? Every kind of matter and force has consciousness and, therefore, life. The purpose of every life is to propagate and protect itself and its kind as much as possible. A life's success in achieving its purpose in life can be measured by experiencing the most net positive feelings over its lifetime after subtracting any negative feelings experienced over the lifetime. A matter feels positive or good when it is in touch with itself and feels secure about achieving the purpose of its life, as mentioned. Some humans who have called themselves gurus or spiritual leaders have advised celibacy, sannyasa, or retirement from family life. Unless such a retired and celibate life works to serve humankind, it is not wise advice. If such celibate and retired life devoid of service to humankind, offers positive feelings for the concerned sannyasa, it is only a selfish choice that goes against the nature of humanity. Such a person is akin to an ant that abandons its colony and goes away to live without performing its assigned role in the ant colony. I will explain the purpose of life and how you can measure if you are achieving it in detail separately. 13. Is there an afterlife? There is no such thing as an afterlife for the soul. Since the body does not die, its independent parts can be used by other life forms for performing similar functions as they did earlier, or the independent parts and cells may change their form later, survive for some time independently, or survive together with other forms of matter. 14. How big is the universe? Space is truly infinite. If the universe can be described as matter within space, it has also been infinite since time immemorial, from the moment it first appeared as me. I have always pervaded the space as a field of conscience at every infinite macro and micro level. I did not create the space. It was always there. It was always infinite. By its very definition, space must be infinite. I existed in space as a field of consciousness from the beginning. Before the first matter manifested, I, as consciousness, evolved over billions of trillions of years. It was also trillions of years ago when the first matter became dense enough to flare up all over the infinite universe setting the process in motion to manifest more varied matter and forces, including planets, stars, galaxies, and more. 
this process of creation or manifestation of new matter is still ongoing at all levels. I will explain this answer with details and more evidence separately. 15. Is the Big Bang theory of the creation of universe correct? No theory of the creation of the universe proposed by humans so far is correct. The Big Bang theory is also false. It is riddled with several obvious errors. One of the biggest flaws in the Big Bang theory is that it treats the process of universe creation as a one-time event in a finite universe. Both assumptions are wrong. The space has always been infinite. It cannot exist any other way. In the infinite space and universe, nothing happens only once. The process that created the first matter in the space that later became dense and flared up is still taking place in those parts of the space that become empty from time to time. I will explain this with more evidence separately. Yet another fatal error of the Big Bang theory is that it is derived from a flawed observation and the assumption that the universe is expanding in every direction. Therefore, if the process is reversed, the universe starts contracting and, after a certain time of 13.7 billion years, becomes a singularity. That is when and where the Big Bang is said to have taken place. I am amused by the sheer foolishness of the most intelligent scientists. They have been observing that the nearest galaxy to human's own Milky Way galaxy, called Andromeda, is coming in to collide with the Milky Way in the future rather than moving away from it. Moreover, scientists have themselves spotted and photographed hundreds of other galaxies that have similarly merged, emerging, or will merge in the future. If that is so, how can the observation that all galaxies have been moving away from each other since the Big Bang be correct? Scientists have almost dishonestly changed the so-called universe expansion rate, called the Hubble constant, several times. It is used to calculate the speed of expansion and contraction and, therefore, the time when the Big Bang happened. Despite changing the Hubble constant drastically over the decades, the time of the Big Bang stays the same. Let me make a prediction. These scientists will never find the location of the singularity where the Big Bang occurred. Whoever tries will find that the singularity of the Big Bang was his own body. If the formulae are run on a computer, the location of the singularity where the Big Bang happened would be revealed to be the same computer. Furthermore, even if humans make a space telescope, millions of times more powerful than the current James Webb telescope in the future, they will always find that the location of the telescope is the center of the universe. This is so, because an infinite universe does not have a center or any other direction. This proof will also debunk the Big Bang theory, dark energy, and many more concepts instantly. These concepts are just a stepping stone towards the eventual understanding of me and therefore everything else in the universe. Humans are certainly capable of understanding that. The humans who call themselves astrophysicists can easily explain the movement of all planets in the solar system on the same plane and in the same direction as the remnants of the early chaotic state of the solar system when planets circled the sun in different directions. In the early solar system, the planets and objects moving in different directions collided with each other until only the planets going in the same direction and in orbits that did not collide remained. This analysis by humans is absolutely correct. However, why they could not consider the same process having happened on a galactic level is silly and amusing, particularly when the evidence is visible and has been photographed so many times. I will explain this answer in more detail and with more evidence separately. 16. Are there multiple universes? No, there is only one infinite universe that has roughly the same structure everywhere because the process of matter manifesting and evolving has been happening all over the infinite space in the same manner. However, there are some exceptions on smaller scales, but when we make the sampling area larger, the exceptions become insignificant. Remember that in an infinite space, the largest selected area will always remain insignificant. 17. Is time separate from space or part of it? Time and space have always been separate entities. Space has always been infinite. While space and matter are physical, time is an arbitrary value created by humans. Where matter exists, space disappears. However, time being a made-up concept can exist anywhere. So, to answer in short, time and space are two separate entities. Time, being an arbitrary value, can be used by humans as they see fit. It is incorrect to say that there is only one unit called space-time and that matter makes a depression in the fabric of space-time to create different time in space or on matter. The fact is that the same time is experienced differently by all conscious beings based on their own mass, physical, or mental state. 
That mass could be your own body's actual mass or the one caused by gravity. Gravity may also be caused by the nearby body's mass or speed, your own or the nearby body's speed. Do you believe that all living beings experience time in the same manner? My answer is no. Different living beings experience time very differently than humans do. Even different human beings on planet Earth experience time differently. An insect that lives for a few days by human clock may experience 100 years of human time. I will explain this answer in more detail and with evidence separately. 18. Will the universe end one day? No, there is no chance of the universe ever ending. Space was, is, and will always remain infinite. The universe within it, which can also be called matter, had a beginning so long ago that the biggest numbers discovered by humans would only account for an insignificant fraction of the actual time. However, it will not come to an end on a universal scale. Of course, since the universe will always continue evolving, the destruction of existing states and forms of matter is destined, from time to time. 19. What is, dark energy? The rate at which all galaxies in every direction are moving away from Earth has been termed, dark energy, by humans. The speed of such movement is said to depend upon their distance from each other. The longer the distance, faster they move away from each other. A Nobel Prize has been granted to three scientists who claim to have decoded the existence of, dark energy. Let me tell you, there is no separate force that, can be called, dark energy. What humans call, dark energy, is nothing more than a cloud of misunderstanding over their perception. Humans created a mystery where none existed and then claimed to have solved it, thereby clouding their minds for future understanding of the universe. First, the galaxies are not moving away from each other on a large area of the universe. Secondly, even on a small part of the universe where it is happening, rate of such movement can only be roughly estimated for a limited time. This observation is not only obviously wrong, but it has also been proven wrongly using manipulated data. I will separately explain the nature of the phenomenon that has been called, dark energy. 20. Does, dark matter, exist? Dark matter, is the name given to a matter that has gravity, but does not interact with any other force or matter. Humans are certain that dark matter exists. They have already spent over a trillion dollars in search of dark matter without any results so far. While there are many new forces and phenomena that humans have yet to discover and many more that will evolve into being, dark matter is not one of them. The need for dark matter arises because of a flawed theory of the creation of a universe conjured by humans instead of the actual one. When I reveal the actual theory in detail separately, the need for dark matter will go away. 21. Do aliens exist? Yes, since humans consider life on planets other than Earth to be alien, most planets and objects themselves are alive. But even if the more evolved manifest life that needs to have a metabolism and the ability to create offspring is considered to be alive, a large percentage of all planets and other celestial bodies have manifest life in them. Some life may be much less evolved than humans, and some will be even more evolved. Nearly all planets and moons in the solar system have alien life, even if it may be at a microbial level. Humans will discover such life on at least two planets and moons within the current decade. 22. What is consciousness? Consciousness is the ability to keep oneself alive in the existing form and create more similar or more evolved matter. To stay alive as conscious matter, matter has learned to see, hear, smell, sense, feel, plan, kill, cheat, work together, and so on. One of the most unique abilities that consciousness has is the ability to change matter's own form by evolving. Life forms can evolve into more complex beings. They can acquire the ability to encode genetic instructions in their cells for future cells to follow. Every matter, at its smallest possible level and in every combination with other matter, is conscious. I follow a simple rule for the manifestation of matter or life. When any space or matter, large or small, achieves a stable state for long enough or reaches a state where the changes follow a predictable pattern for long enough, new matter and life will manifest themselves on such space or matter. The longer conditions remain stable or predictable, the more complex life becomes and new ones emerge. I have always been present as a field of consciousness all over the infinite universe. Following the rule of matter manifestation, the first matter took form from me billions of trillions of years ago. That initial matter gradually became dense, started moving and gathering mass in many different directions, and eventually became so dense that it flared up to create more and different matter all over the infinite universe. Since then, 
the same process of matter manifesting from empty space and eventually flaring up has been occurring on a smaller scale all over infinite space. Humans have even photographed this process in its different stages in space, but they have failed to interpret the phenomenon. The process of manifestation of matter and evolution of matter has also been happening not only in the empty space, but also on and inside the existing matter, provided the conditions of a stable or predictable e state for a long enough time are satisfied. I have created one simple rule by which the conscience works. Every particle, atom, cell, molecule, and form in the universe is alive with a conscience, whether you consider it living or not. Each one of them has been given a conscience to prolong and propagate its best kind in every possible way. As a corollary to this rule, the matter also needs to feel good or be positive for as long as possible. When it feels good, it is in the best position to create the best of its kind in more numbers or take care of the existing ones of its kind. I will explain it with evidence separately. When anything in the universe is in a changing state in an unpredictable way, it may cease being alive temporarily. But as soon as the state of things becomes stable or the changes become predictable on any scale, it becomes alive again, and if the same state persists for a long enough time, more of old life will manifest itself from it. The conscience in matter enables it to attract or repel other matter within its inclination and power. Such attraction and repellence are caused by two kinds of forces, positive and negative. Positive forces work to create more matter over a larger area and evolve the consciousness of matter. At the same time, negative forces contract the matter and destroy or overcome its consciousness. When positive forces pervade an area for long enough, negative forces will certainly emerge. They will start neutralizing positive forces with their own. When negative forces pervade a large area, positive forces will certainly emerge. When such positive forces reach a critical mass, they will quickly overcome the entire negative force. This rule gives positive forces a slight edge that helps evolve consciousness and matter over time. The closer a matter is physically to another matter, the stronger is the reaction the forces create on it. All the matter in the infinite universe as well as all the manifest life on earth and elsewhere, evolved following these rules. It is still evolving, and it will continue evolving forever. As the consciousness behind the entire evolving universe is me, I too am constantly evolving. 23. Are positive forces good and negative forces bad? No, both forces are created by me. Both are necessary. One emerges from the other. However, positive forces are more powerful in the long run. They help spread evolution. Positive forces work toward expansion, while negative forces result in contraction. Expansion begins at a single point and can spread to an infinite universe, while contraction has to select an outer boundary to start working and then contract to a center point. Therefore, positive forces have an edge. Both types of forces take different forms in the context of 1. The universe, 2. Manifest life and 3. Consciousness or emotions. As far as human emotions are concerned, positive and negative forces are created by your mind. When you blame someone or something, you generate negative emotions and forces. And when you do not blame or are thankful, you generate positive emotions and forces. I will explain them in detail separately. 24. Can humans ever see me? No one can ever see me in my entirety, simply because I am infinite and all-pervading at every possible level. However, you can see a part of me everywhere. Everything that you can see, touch, smell, think of, or experience is me. You are also a part of me. Everything else is too. 25. Do humans have a soul? Yes, but not like the soul humans have described. They say the body dies upon death, but the soul never dies. The soul is said to take on new life in a new body either immediately after death or eventually. This is exactly the opposite of what is true. You do have a soul. Your soul stays with you only as long as you are alive. It disappears when you die or lose your conscience. So, when you die, your soul dies, but the body does not die. Most individual cells in your body live their full live. S. Some die subsequently, and some form alliances with other matter just as they formed alliances with cells in your body to create you to understand the soul. Understand the following. Most life forms, including humans, are made up of multiple independently conscious particles, atoms and cells. They have come together in a life form to follow the rules of consciousness independently and collectively. They are living both an independent and a collective life within the life form. 
Your soul is the collective consciousness of all the living cells in your body. This collective consciousness is your soul, and it is the reason you feel different, and at times, disconnected from your physical body. 26. What is death? Death means losing command over the collective consciousness of all the cells in your body. That also implies the death of the soul. When you die, most cells in your body are still alive. They may die later, or they may live alone or with other cells for some time. So, only the soul of the collective consciousness of all the cells in the body dies. But the body does not fully die immediately. The cells in the body may take on different forms right after death and even after the body is disposed of. Keep in mind that every form of matter is alive. As the body transforms into numerous other atoms, an equal number of new souls come into existence. 27. How can near-death and past-life experiences be explained? Near-death experiences are when a person who may be close to medical death or may have shown signs of medical death becomes alive and then claims to have visited another world. These are nothing else than the person recovering control over the collective conscience after losing it temporarily. This happens several other times. For example, when a person is thoroughly intoxicated or is in deep sleep, in such other cases, the cells in the body remain healthy but are overwhelmed with intoxicants or are themselves resting. However, they do not lose the will or capability to stay in the body. So, when they overcome the temporary overwhelming, they all start projecting their collective conscience, and the body then gains the collective conscience and becomes alive again. The difference between such cases and near-death experience is that in the later, most of or the critical cells in the body are overwhelmed with extraneous substance or they die first. That means they lose their individual consciousness, then the body loses control over the collective consciousness and dies temporarily. However, with conscious effort, for their own good, the individual cells make their individual consciousness connect to make the whole consciousness again. This makes the body regain consciousness and become alive again. I have mentioned that all cells have the capability to perform some or most of the functions that the dedicated sensory organs perform. During the temporary death, such experiences that may be strange and illogical may be left in the memory of the concerned cells which is retrieved by the collective conscience, often later or with some delay. I have said that there is no past or future. All records of such experiences are fake, made up, illusions, or imbalances in the collective conscience, which is possible in several ways. I may describe them separately one day. Don't waste your time, thinking about it. If there was a past life and some people could remember it, why not all? 27. How can near-death and past-life experiences be explained? Near-death experiences are when a person who may be close to medical death or may have shown signs of medical death becomes alive and then claims to have visited another world. These are nothing else than the person recovering control over the collective conscience after losing it temporarily. This happens several other times. For example, when a person is thoroughly intoxicated or is in deep sleep, in such other cases, the cells in the body remain healthy but are overwhelmed with intoxicants or are themselves resting. However, they do not lose the will or capability to stay in the body. So, when they overcome the temporary overwhelming, they all start projecting their collective conscience, and the body then gains the collective conscience and becomes alive again. The difference between such cases and near-death experience is that in the later, most of or the critical cells in the body are overwhelmed with extraneous substance or they die first. That means they lose their individual consciousness, then the body loses control over the collective consciousness and dies temporarily. However, with conscious effort, for their own good, the individual cells make their individual consciousness connect to make the whole consciousness again. This makes the body regain consciousness and become alive again. I have mentioned that all cells have the capability to perform some or most of the functions that the dedicated sensory organs perform. During the temporary death, such experiences that may be strange and illogical may be left in the memory of the concerned cells which is retrieved by the collective conscience, often later or with some delay. I have said that there is no past or future. All records of such experiences are fake, made up, illusions, or imbalances in the collective conscience, which is possible in several ways. I may describe them separately one day. Don't waste your time, thinking about it. If there was a past life and some people could remember it, why not all? 28. What happens when people report seeing unreal things or ghosts, angels and even God? Of all the things mentioned in the question, only I exist. But I can only be partly imagined or experienced. 
my form is the whole infinite universe, which is impossible to imagine. However, any medium can be created and imagined as representing me. No ghosts, demons, or angels exist. But if a person claims to experience them, it is because of the mostly negative forces that are present within him. This is common when the dedicated sensory cells become weak but still want to perform their function. Sometimes non-dedicated cells perform the work of the dedicated cells when they are inactive or weak. That leads to many ways in which hallucinations may be created. If the hallucination is caused by negative forces, there is an easy way to neutralize them if you really need to. Since that is a different topic of feelings and emotions, I will talk about that separately. 29. Why do people report benefits from prayers and other practices? If placebos work, anything can work as a placebo. By itself, nothing happens through Reiki, Tarot, Astrology, Prayer, etc. Any definitive benefits claimed from them are false and even fraudulent. However, as I have mentioned separately, when any of those work as an element or medium of experiencing me, they may work on some people to some extent at times. But these are all suboptimal means of experiencing me and are very expensive in terms of both time and money. A free method exists to experience yourself and me instantly and even all the time. 30. What if heaven and hell do exist? So, you're skeptical of my word. I, on the other hand, cannot be angry, sad, or punish you for not believing me. Because that's how I am, and I have no hell to punish you in the afterlife and no way to influence you while you you still alive. But even if heaven and hell existed, I will show you that it is not worthwhile to think about them and waste even one cent of your current money or happiness on them. 31. How can humans experience me? Humans and everything else in the universe are part of me. I am the whole of the universe and everything in it, but I am not the same every day. I am ever changing and evolving with everything else. That is why you can never experience the whole of me. Indeed, it is possible that you, despite being a part of me, can often forget or ignore me and even forget what you are meant to represent. When you are working as the soul of your body, which is the combined conscience of all the cells and atoms in your body, by engaging all your senses, you are acting as a part of me but not always experiencing me. I will reveal how to experience me in brief, here. There are more definitive ways I can be experienced, but I may reveal them later. Your constant thoughts and bodily urges make you incapable of experiencing me. As you start removing the thoughts and bodily urges, you start coming closer to me. When you have only one thought of any kind, you are touching me. But to be one with me, you must experience no thoughts or urges of any kind. When you can do that, you also experience yourself as a combination of trillions of conscious cells united in your body with a common purpose. You also start experiencing some part of me and start interacting with the consciences of other matter and forces in the universe that otherwise have the potential to impact you. You can also experience a part of me by focusing solely on any one person, object, or force of any kind that you can see, smell, hear, touch, or feel. If you want to experience the most of me, you can, 1. Create a medium, 2. Assume that the medium represents me, and then 3. Focus on me through the medium. This medium can be anything if you can convince yourself that it represents me. However, you will find that it is a lot easier if the medium is a statue or object that you or someone else has described to represent me. The better the description, the easier the process becomes. When you focus on me through the medium, you will forget about the medium in time. That is also the time when you will have no thoughts or desires. You will be in touch with and communicate with every cell and atom in your own body and in the universe. You will experience the pinnacle of joy, healing, and rebalancing of your thoughts and being, toward the purpose of your life and the life of your kind. You can also experience me by experiencing yourself. To experience yourself, realize that you too are a master of your own universe. This universe lives inside you. You are constantly creating new independent life. That life is in the form of new cells and organisms. Most of them have their own independent lives and consciousness. Most of them choose to live in your universe, which is your body, and perform certain functions for or against it. Your body has over 37 trillion cells and trillions of other organisms and molecules. All of them are alive and conscious. They have their own, independent lives that have very little to do with yours. They have all chosen your life form to live and have taken on various roles to support it in order to increase their chances of survival and propagation. 
The ancestors of some of them had chosen to come together to live as a combined form that gradually evolved into humans. Your consciousness represents the collective consciousness of all of the atoms and cells inside your body. Being conscious means having the ability to see, sense, desire, and act in accordance with the rules of evolution with the sole purpose of performing the purpose of life for all matter. Your true soul is your collective conscience. It is the reason that you feel different in your body. Death is when the body loses control over the combined consciousness in an irreversible way. Every cell in your body can see, hear, smell, sense, feel, and perform other conscious functions. However, to live together as a combined form, they agree to give dedicated jobs of seeing, thinking, hearing, smelling, etc. to certain cells. Those cells then make themselves into the specialized organs. Even after that, most other cells retain all or some of the conscious powers to some extent. This means that many other cells that are not part of your eyes can also see, and those that are not part of the brain can also perform brain functions, and so on for other organs. However, the senses of non-dedicated cells are not as efficient as those of the dedicated cells, or those senses may, and mostly are, turned off deliberately by the non-dedicated cells. Sometimes, your non-dedicated cells perform the task of dedicated cells in the sense organs. This may happen when they deem it necessary for the common good or under stress. If that happens, you experience what is known as intuition or other extrasensory experiences. The process of experiencing yourself is the same as the process of experiencing me. 1. You can focus on any part of the body and the cells in it. 2. Focus on the entire outside and inside of your body and cells by focusing on any one part of your body or rotating your consciousness from one to another. 3. Make a medium to represent every cell in your body and focus on the medium to, in turn, focus on them. When you are in a state where you are experiencing yourself, which also means you are experiencing me as well, miracles can happen. You will be able to know yourself. You will reach a state in which you can desire healing and other changes in your body. If the desire is strong enough and stays long enough, you can achieve anything, physically or mentally. 32. If God does not judge, reward, or punish humans, am I encouraging bad behavior? It is true that I will not judge, reward, or punish you for your behavior. But once I explain to you separately what there is for you to gain and lose by your behavior, you will be able to decide the best way to live life and choose the force you want to become, positive or negative. Both forces will always exist and emerge from one another. Positive will win in the long term seen from my clock with infinite time in it. 33. Why is there suffering in the world if God exists? Refer to my answers to the question, who is God? I do not love, hate, care, feel, protect, or punish. Everything that happens emerges from the consciousness of cells and the forces acting on them, whether internal or external. That determines what happens to a life form while it is taking shape. The same forces work to impact the life form thereafter. Certain people and cults have overemphasized the presence of suffering in the world and then advised ways to eliminate or avoid human suffering. It is akin to saying that human life is cursed by the need to discharge urine too often. Then advise them to stop drinking or devise ways to collect urine through a tube inserted in the body. Such people were among the most ignorant, preaching falsehoods to unsuspecting people. Such people still exist and thrive as a negative force. I will explain what humans call suffering and how to convert it into happiness in detail separately. But for now, understand that life is free from suffering if you know me and the nature of the universe. Even if you lack the necessary knowledge, you can reduce your suffering and extend your happiness throughout your life. 34. What are emotions? Are they part of consciousness too? Emotions are felt by all life when it thinks of, or does something for, another. Specific emotions are felt based on the perceived impact of such other being on own well-being. Remember that life includes all matter, cells, and forms, some of which humans may consider non-living. So, let me explain them here from the point of view of human emotions. If you think of someone you love, you feel love. If you th, ink of someone you hate, you feel hate. It is the same for other emotions. Do all these emotions live inside you? No, these emotions do not live inside you. They are generated as needed. However, some humans may train their brains to generate or not generate the one condition that is responsible for generating negative feelings in most of their interactions with another subject. Based on how they choose to experience that one condition, 
people will develop what is called either a positive or negative personality. Emotions are also evolutionary. More emotions evolve when there are circumstances to feel them. For example, you will not feel jealousy if you know you are the best among all or when there is no one there except you. The same goes for other emotions. In certain conditions, some emotions will simply not exist. If you remove every kind of thought from your mind, you will not feel any emotions. Emotions are felt by you only when another physical or non-physical subject is involved. Let us call it subject too. It may be a person, animal, object, cause, like, save the planet, or spirit, like God or a ghost. 35. When do we feel positive emotions or love? Conditions to feel positive emotions or love. You feel positive forces and emotions when, 1. You undertake any physical or mental trouble because of the other subject, and 2. You do not blame the other subject for your trouble, or you are thankful to the subject for your trouble. Remember, 1. Trouble taken in the past, being taken currently or a mental commitment to take trouble in future are the same. 2. Trouble need not be for the benefit of subject 2. 3. Trouble may be, a. Voluntarily taken by you, or, b. Given by subject 2, or, c. Given by someone but because of subject 2, or, d. Given by the circumstances, but because of subject 2, 4. Higher the trouble, stronger the positive emotions. 5. Higher the thankfulness, higher the positive emotions. 6. Closer you and subject to are, have been or perceived to be in future, higher will be the love or positive emotions that are felt. In the order of physical closeness, you can be physically too far, somewhere around, very near, touching, penetrating, or fully inside the other. 36. When do we feel negative emotions or hate? Conditions to feel negative emotions or hate, there is only one change required in the conditions above. That simple and instant change can make you feel negative emotions or hate, instead of positive emotions or love. The change is that instead of not blaming subject 2 or being thankful to subject 2 for the trouble taken, start blaming subject 2. 1. The higher the trouble, the stronger the negative emotions. 2. The higher the blame, the higher the negative emotions. 3. Closer you and subject 2 are, have been or perceived to be in future, higher will be the negative emotions or hate that are felt. You can verify this knowledge. 1. Think of a person you hate. If you can think of someone you hate, it means you have taken, a taking, or expect to take a lot of trouble on account of this person. 2. And you blame the person for giving you or causing you trouble. Now, convince yourself that you do not and will never blame this person. If you could manage to stop blaming the person, you would not hate him or her now. Now if you can convince yourself to be thankful to this person for causing you trouble that has helped your life in the past or will help in the future, you will see that your hate has converted into love for this person. I have explained this topic in brief here. It is a very big subject. Once you understand it fully, you will have every answer, solution, and application wherever emotions are involved in your life. That is always the case. You are never free of your feelings and emotions, except when you are experiencing me and have no thoughts of any kind I will explain it all separately in detail with evidence. 37. My future dialogues. I will explain the following points in detail and with evidence lat. Er, uh, the evidence will be video, photographic, or something that anyone can instantly verify. All matter, cells, atoms, and forces are alive, whether you consider them living or not. All matter and cells etc., have an independent consciousness. Cells collaborate with other cells to evolve into complex forms and assign or assume dedicated functions for the combined form. The soul is the combined consciousness of all the cells in a body. The soul dies upon death, but the body remains alive. There is no past or afterlife. God does not love, hate, punish, reward, or even care about you, whether you pray or not. There is no heaven or hell in the afterlife. No ghosts, angels, or demons exist. Space is infinite and has always been infinite. Space and time are not one entity called space-time. Objects with mass do not stretch the fabric of space-time in reality. Because time is imaginary, it can be imagined in any way. Gravity is a negative force of consciousness. Scientists have not yet been able to classify gravity as a force yet. Negative forces are not necessarily bad and positive ones not necessarily good for all matter impacted. Positive forces can use negative forces to achieve their purposes at times, and vice versa. 
How did the universe begin? What really is the phenomenon called dark energy? How are the black holes formed? Why is it wrong to say that nothing can escape black holes, including light? Why the existence of dark matter is not needed to prove the origin of the universe or the orbit of stars in galaxies, as is currently believed? How is the Big Bang theory incorrect as a theory of the origin of the universe? If the Big Bang theory is incorrect, what explains the existence of the CMB, or cosmic microwave background that pervades the known universe, do aliens exist? How prevalent are aliens in the universe? The rules of evolution, the rules of consciousness. How life evolved consciously, exactly as it desired to, and not through random mutations. Natural selection as it is defined by humans, did not work either. What are human feelings? How are they generated? How are they related to the rule of consciousness and evolution? Why have humans not been able to even define love? Although all humans experience it and so many gurus and gods have advised people to love others. How can all emotions be defined and measured? How can we control our own emotions toward others and others' emotions toward us? Do animals also have feelings? If all matter is alive, does it have feelings too? What is the ideal way to live for humans? What is the best book or philosophy that comes closest to me out of all the ones available? End of the dialogue.